by this Dr. Karen's week five has arrived in high performance people management. A quick review of our roadmap. We're making progress. We're heading down the home stretch, engaging in critical thinking, observing behavior, and you're applying it masterfully. And I look forward to your applied organizational diagnosis paper of an organization of your choosing. My desire for this course to have a positive life changing experience for you is a continuation. So I just want to talk briefly about a couple things in the chapters uh, 15 through 17. And 17 tends to be a little bit more technical a, uh, a chapter. So I'm going to look at 15 and 16 as it relates to our continuation of the interaction and the intersection of faith and work and how uh, these theories uh, that we're studying, how they can help us uh, in our relationships uh, with people personally and professionally at work. Uh, as well as having a career that is meaningful and serves a purpose and has a life of integrity. And then how these th same theories can help us uh, serve God uh, at work by helping develop and shape our faith. So let's look at sustainable relationships and how an understanding of our conflict style will help us. And those of you that will be continuing on to managing teams in conflict, uh, in that uh, course, uh, it, people will take the assessment to determine what your uh, conflict resolution style is. Uh, but you could take it ahead of time too. It never hurts to uh, know exactly what your style is because it's important because again, that's how you approach conflict when you are faced with it, whether it be personally or professionally. And so these are the various conflict styles. And so uh, seeing where you are and what you uh, tend to do, and doesn't mean that you don't engage in some of the other styles, but you have a go-to style. And so an aspect to think about in terms of how my faith may intersect uh, intersect with uh, conflict resolution. I could look to Philippians chapter 2 verse 4 where I need to focus on the interests of others, especially when it comes to uh, negotiating other sorts of things. What is it that uh, someone else is seeking? And so if I can seek to satisfy those, I'm going to resolve conflict. I'm going to uh, resolve issues and problems. And then the things that I say uh, could either light a fire or help put one out. So my speech, I need to be conscious of the words that I choose. And, and especially when it comes to, believe it or not, emails. Uh, I found uh, uh, that sometimes uh, people will email and they'll shout at someone else. And of course, you know, that's when you have the caps uh, lock on and everything is in caps. And I had a boss of mine who, that's, he kept it on uh, constantly. And so uh, people actually came to me and said, is he shouting at me? Is he angry with me? I said, no, that just happens to be his style, and he likes that. So it's really, I think his style was to not let him know whether he was upset or not, and they had to read the email. But be conscious of all of your communication, whether verbal or in writing, uh, the words that you say. And again, that helps us uh, exercise our faith, but then my understanding of my conflict can influence uh, my faith uh, journey as well. Looking at a life of meaning and, and integrity, uh, this hits both avenues in chapters 16 and 17. And this may seem a, a little strange to you, and let me explain it. Uh, how in the world can we look at organization charts and then uh, structural imperatives of how an organization is actually uh, put together and how you want to uh, structure the uh, departments within and the span of control for uh, leaders in that. Uh, so how, what does that really have to do with serving God in the workplace uh, and how does it affect my faith journey? And it, it affects it in, in this way. An organization chart uh, is, is a, a, a chart from uh, top to bottom. So we, we serve uh, a master, if you would. And so uh, we look at God as our ultimate master, but also we have individuals in our life that we work for uh, who are our bosses. And as such, they have a span of control over us and they have influence over us and the decisions we make and the things that we do. And as I have scripture here in Colossians, he is the head of the body, meaning Christ. And so I need to have someone who is the head of, of me. And that person can be an individual that I work for, but it also from a spiritual standpoint that I take direction from the Godhead. And so as I look at this and realize that I need to have some structure in my life, uh, Moses 
uh, listened to his father-in-law and did all that he said. And we have him as maybe a first example of someone looking at an organization structure that he put uh, together. And this is really saying that we'll have individuals in our life that will speak into our life. And every leader uh, takes direction. And that doesn't mean that uh, they're, they're not uh, make their own decisions. What that means is that regardless of whether you're a CEO, the President of the United States, that you take in uh, direction from others in terms of the things that they say and they speak into your life and the guidance and direction that they give you and you listen to it and you heed it and you consider it and you process it and you don't just you know do it blindly but you have individuals that will speak into your life that will hopefully direct you in the right paths that you should should take and so I also want to call upon God because he's going to reveal things to me that uh, humanity may not and and this is one of those avenues that I found sometimes in a secular environment when I might be praying about a decision or something that I needed to do uh, sometimes I didn't necessarily communicate to my bosses you know I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on God to tell me what to do uh, but because they're expecting me to make a decision and in that action though I am uh, expecting God to to influence uh, the things that I do and then we have you know where again this speaks to that direction so who are the people that you have in your life and do you respect them uh, do you bring people into uh, your circle that will speak truth to you uh, you've heard the saying speaking truth to power and uh, we all need individuals and I had uh, people that I work with that purposefully had other individuals who thought differently than them be on their team for the sole purpose of giving them a different perspective now the interesting aspect of that was that they didn't always follow or make it easy for that individual to express their opinion about something so uh, just keep those things in mind that uh, you you may put people in your life but are you allowing them to speak into your life uh, and providing direction and again we see a board of directors who are the board of directors uh, in your life consider those aspects uh, as well okay that's week five as we happening this week continue to daily make mention of you on our prayers a forum discussion uh, listen and watch my lecture on a conversation about leadership and the purpose driven life complete chapters 12 to 14 quiz read chapters 15 to 17 and you'll have that quiz in week six. Virtual hours on Tuesdays, noon to one. Should you need me, no appointment necessary. Otherwise, let me know via email or a text. Thank you. Have a great week.